Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we will discuss about the comparison between the two examination. These two examination, Indian Economic Service and RBI DEPR. So this is RBI Grade B DEPR exam, Department of Economic Policy and Research. These two examinations are very vital. Those who are preparing for any competitive examination, especially economics background students. For that, the master's degree is compulsory. So in master's degree, if you are uh, if you are having the degree of MA Economics in Economics, Econometrics, Applied Economics, you are eligible for this. And for RBA DEPR, all the economics students, master's students and we can say MBA finance student is also eligible for this examination. So there were a lot of comments in the comment section like to make this video of the comparison. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe on Ecolix. So we'll start comparing these two examinations. Here is the comparison. So you can see the first Indian Economic Service column and this is RBI grade B. So how to prepare, what to study, what not to study, how to approach the exam is totally different. A lot of students requested me. So I've made this comparison. Listen very carefully. Now this examination, Indian Economic Service conducted by UPSC and the RBI is conducted by RBI itself. So it means the level of the examination is different. UPSC examination, you know that UPSC conducts the like most toughest exam of our country and RBI examination is mainly bank level IBPS, SBI, PO if you have given. So it's almost on the same category, but more or less focused towards economics only. Now, if you see the level of the examination or we can say the mode of the examination is subjective. It means you always have to write the answers in the answer copy. So this is an answer copy. So all the papers that will come all are subjective. But here in RBI, you see that there's a multiple choice question, subjective as well, and they will test your typing skills as well. So what does it mean? If you see the MCQ, so the RBI is conducting in phase one MCQ. The phase two will be of subjective nature where you have to write the Indian economy uh, test and the typing skills that is again under phase two, but that is of English paper. So here it is economics. So I hope you understand that here in RBI, they are testing all the three skills that you uh, need to clear the exam. Okay. Now on the same lines, if you see the, the difficulty level, so you can see there's no negative marking in Indian economic service because the subjective exam. So you'll get like full marks or some medium marks or you'll get zero, but you'll not get negative marking because it's a subjective paper. But here different negative marking is there, especially in the MCQ based paper. So in the phase one, they will ask MCQ questions around 62, 64 question changing every time. And here you can say different, different negative marking. It means for a one marker question, the negative marking would be different. For two marker, it would be different. For three marker, it would be different. For four marker, it would be different. I've explained in another video. The link is in the description if you want to understand more about RBI. But since we are discussing about the comparison, so I'm not going into this. Okay, so I hope you understand that the negative marking is different, especially in the MCQ that is conducted into phase one examination. Now here in Indian Economic Service, you need to have the knowledge of economics because there are four papers. English, they will ask English paper, general English and general studies as well. In general studies, you have to read polity. Okay, you have to read history. And now we are running the batches. So we'll teach that. That is also the part of the course. English Economics GS, we all teach three subjects, three different variety of subjects in our classes, like classes. So here you have to study polity, history and geography and here English separately and the four paper of economics. But if you compare it with RBI, here you have to study only economics plus English. So English, if you remember, that's a typed paper, typing skills they will test and in economics, it is both MCQ as well as subjective. So here the the knowledge required not of GS only English and but the level of English in UPSC and RBI is totally different. Okay, you understand this is totally subjective and this is typing. You have to show the typing skills. So again, uh, different ball game. Now, if you see the syllabus, if you see the syllabus of UPSC, it's everything 
in economics mentioned in the syllabus. So each and every topic the, is clearly defined. The syllabus is very vast. If you talk about economics, there are four papers and these four papers are well defined. But here in RBI, syllabus is not defined. They haven't given the syllabus. What they've written is master's level syllabus or the knowledge is required. So any central university MA economic syllabus is the syllabus of RBI with some uh, some topics of MBA finance also the part of it. So syllabus not defined, it means they can ask any question. There is no definite syllabus that RBI is following. So here this makes this exam very difficult. On the other side, the vastness of the syllabus makes IES a difficult exam. So both in on this particular point, they are very different. Now, if you see the next point, the examination is of three day exam. So examination will be on Friday, then Saturday and Sunday. So two papers on Friday, two papers on Saturday and two papers on Sunday. Morning shift, afternoon shift. Morning shift is 9 to 12 and then 2 to 5 p.m. is the afternoon shift. So it means in three days, exam will be over. But in RBI, it's like conducted into two phases. Phase one consists of MCQ. Phase two consists of subjective plus typing skills, means economics paper as well as English paper. So these two phases, the generally students get 20 to 25 days between uh, the two phases. So 20 to 25 days you'll get into phase one and phase two. So phase one is purely MCQ, phase two is subjective plus typing. Okay. So this is subjective is economics, typing skills is English paper. So this makes a vast difference because here you read MCQ skills as well, but here only the answer writing practice is required. This is a one-time examination, but this examination conducted into phase two, two phases. I hope this makes sense. Still any doubt, mention in the comment section. Next is writing skills. Here in UPSC exam, writing skills plays a very important role. How to write introduction, how to write body, conclusion, etc. I have a session on answer writing as well. You can watch that as well. But here numerical skills are required, especially in clearing the phase one examination. In phase one, they ask questions from functions, questions from econometrics, statistics, etc. So if you think that you're not good in those, it would be difficult to clear the phase one examination for RBI. But here writing skills are more important. In the six papers, except for general economics one, all other five papers are theoretical based. So it means that your analytical skills plays a very important role, your answer writing skills. These are the things that will come handy. But here numerical skills are more or less required. In the phase two where I talked about subjective, they will ask theoretical question related to Indian economy, sometimes micro. Since I said that the syllabus is not defined, so it would be difficult for you to predict the questions. They can ask any questions. Also, they do not give the question paper, but in UPSC IES examination, you'll get the question paper. So here that makes more difficult this examination, not difficult, but more unpredictable can ask anything. Okay, so that's a major difference. Then the next one is here, whenever you are writing answers, you have to write problem solving skills required. It means if they're asking that in India, unemployment is high, what will happen with that? So what are the things that you can do? So if they will ask Manrega like scheme is good for urban areas or not? So can we replicate the same scheme to urban areas? So these kind of problem solving skills you need to solve the questions. But here it's more or less research based skill required because you know that the name suggests DEP or Department of Economic uh, and put economic and policy research. So it's mainly research based. So your knowledge of statistics, your knowledge of research, PhD, hypothesis, testing, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, they will test especially in the phase one as well as in the phase two. Now, next we are coming on to the last two points. Here the interview weightage is very high, 200 marks. But here the interview weightage is 50 marks. So you can see the interview of RBI is not very tough, but IES interview is more or less requires a lot of analytical skills to qualify that. Okay. And the last that we have is the job profile. Job profile is policy making framework. So it is generally in the Ministry of Finance. And I will start. So here the chances of growth is very high. 
here also in RBI, it's processing and analysis of data. So if you are the, still in the job of data analytics and somewhere, so you'll be able to find this a particular uh, good opportunity for you. So here, like you have to collect the data, the different, different policy reports that RBI publish. So here, this kind of job profile you have to do. Here you'll make government policies, etc. Now, how different is our course, especially if we talk about uh, these two examination. In the Indian Economic Service, we cover from like starting to the end. It means we'll cover economics, full English and GS as well. We provide test, we provide study material that will come in the hard copy and all the mentorship session. On the same lines, RBI also we are doing. But here the syllabus is not defined by RBI. So what we have done is like uh, we have seen the last four years question paper directly from the examination hall and we have certain idea about how to approach this exam so we have that knack where we clear the examination last time 50 percent of the students were from rbi there are that they were from classroom program also in indian economic service in 2020 2020 exam air1 and air2 are from ecolix classroom program so again you can see that both the exams are different both the exams requires different skills, different strategy. So see accordingly. If you still have any doubt, you can connect directly to me on my phone number. Phone number is given on the screen. And apart from that, there are a lot of contact details in the description. So you can consult your concern and you can also understand which examination is best for you. Because first you have to see what kind of work you will do for the next 20, 30 years of your life. So first you see what is perfect for your profile. For that, you need counseling. We have an academic counselor as well. You can uh, call them, you can consult, and you can also take advice. I hope you like this video. Also, we are starting the new batches, new live classes, as well as the recorded classes for working professionals are also available. If you're interested in that, you can contact on the numbers given on the screen. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to eColleagues. Thank you so much.